So how how competitive how competitive is your industry? Like, is it really difficult to get into or? Yeah, so uh, getting into graduate school is extremely competitive. Um, so turns out I'm in a really good class right now. Everyone has a really high GPA and everything like that. Um, so, and I'm pretty sure any medical field that you're in, if you're getting into you know medical school or any like veterinary school or anything like that, it's always going to be very very competitive uh, environment, um, just because. Like for example, physical therapy school here at Toledo. I think there's only about 28 spots um, for. I think they get 400, 500 applications. So that is a very competitive field to get just those few spots in there. So pretty much every assignment matters. Every test is going to matter. Every class, every single grade that you get is going to matter. So um, I know for me personally, the last three years I've been in college, I've been really high strung about my grades um, and really worried about it because just because that all of that matters a lot and your GPA getting into graduate school and all that, that is really huge in helping you out. And it's, like I said, it's, it's a very high pressure, very competitive environment to get into graduate school. But then once you get into graduate school, not as competitive anymore. Um, you can actually talk to the people that are, are in your major and like study with them and mm-hmm. everything like that, work together and get good grades. And then you can, you know, go on to be a physical therapist in the future. Do you yeah. feel that amongst the people in your, your classes, like the competitiveness? To start out, no. Um, probably my first two years here, I it wasn't competitive for me. We all studied together and it was all good and fine. Um, and then starting probably this past year, my junior year, um, we did those mock interviews that we do every year. So the first two years, mock interviews are like, oh, it's just good practice for when we're actually interviewing for graduate school. But it kind of had a different feel to it this year. Um, It was more, for lack of a better term, kind of more of a measuring contest between Mm -hmm. everyone Mm -hmm. during these mock interviews. And it was just a mock interview. Um, And I thought, like, being just a practice interview, I thought it was, I felt like it was a really intense interview because I was all with all these guys that I've mm-hmm. been together with for the last two years. And I'm thinking, you know, if it's going to be this way at a mock interview, imagine how it is going to be at an actual interview. So I actually just a few days ago got an offer for an interview for the other decision program for Toledo. Um, so I'm really nervous about that. But yeah, I, I have definitely felt probably the last year um, that competitive feel mm-hmm. between me and my uh, other classmates in the class. Now it's competitive, but it's not like hostile. Is it like people aren't trying to break each other's legs? Like, are you still able to work with each other? Or has it gotten competitive to the point where you're like trying to mess each other up? Oh, no, no. Okay. We don't do that. Um, sometimes we might try and like key each other's cars or like slash tires. Mm-hmm. Right. That's just typical. Um, yeah, you know, it's, I, I feel like every major does that, you know? Sure. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, we still, we're still going to be there and help each other out. Um, And yeah, I'm making this all sound like it's absolutely horrible, very cutthroat and everything like that. We still help each other out, um, but it's just more of that like feeling that you have in the classroom and the environment that you're in um, and more of like, oh, like I'm competing with this one person for these five spots that are available for me. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's just more something that's on the back of your head and the back of your mind um, and not something that you're going to fight over with someone, you know. Mm -hmm. So do you stop studying together then? (laughs) <laughs> like you, that, that's like we, that's, yeah that was that's the vibe kind of, I was getting yeah, yeah and you know what <laughs> not really uh, okay. so yeah, you're a sorry. liar I am a liar <laughs> wow. I've been lying no I, I, I guess I have been giving off that vibe um, but I guess I don't know if it's maybe because I'm doing other things on campus maybe getting more involved or anything like that but I guess I have kind of noticed less studying with my friends but I still get together with them and study a lot for our classes and stuff like that so Cool. So once when you um, graduate, is that competitiveness going to stay with you or is it going to? Um, in terms, I mean, at that point, we're all in this together. It's, hey, let's get through graduate school and all of that stuff. Um, where was I going with this? I had a thought and I was going to go with it. Well, and I let me, let me say this. Uh, my current roommate right now is also in the same program as you competing uh-huh. against you right now. Oh, so, he is. Yeah. And I'm very conflicted because I've lived with you for two years and now I've lived with him for two years or like two, two summers basically. Yeah. And I don't know who to choose. Like, am I team Caleb or team other person who I can't legally name on air here? <laughs> yeah, it's like that team Jacob. And he team knows Edward. who you are though. Yeah. He knows who I am. Yeah. I don't know. Who, he de- oh, he, wait, well, you I guys don't. This kid is. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. What measures are you going to take this to? Is the real question. 
I don't know. We'll just see who like buys me the most Strideline socks with the offer code I mean, MTD. Just invite them over here and we can fight to the death. That would be very, <laughs> okay. Yeah, let me call him. Yeah. All right. And he. Well, did I mean, not that's answer. a that's a lose lose because then if you're then the neither one, of you. Well, no, no, no. Because if you're the one that gets, wait, no, that's a win win. Because if you injure the other person, then you can do your you can practice practice your exercise science on them. Exactly. So, what? Well, ah, that's true too. Yeah. Yeah. So I take. That can out. I ask you a spicy question? How spicy is it? Uh, mild. Mild. Okay. Let's hear. What do you think of chiropractors? Um, so Which that, that? It's really like adjust pop, your, Yeah, they adjust and like pop your back and stuff like that. Uh, um, personally, I probably just as everyone else, I love having my back cracked and everything like that. Um, and I remember I've been shadowing a physical therapist for a while and I've known him for the last five years. He was my physical therapist when I got injured. Um, and trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, uh, cross country. Oh, you yeah. ran into a trampoline while you were running cross country? Oh man. I wish. No, it was, it was just like a chronic knee injury that I had. So I just went to physical therapy for a little bit. But, um, I remember shadowing him and asking him the question of, you know, what do you think about chiropractors? Cause I've always heard that there's this huge disconnect between physical therapists and chiropractors. Um, but he he actually went to Toledo for graduate school. Um, and he told me that when he was there, like he asked the same thing and they never really talked bad about chiropractors. Mm -hmm. Um, they just said like, uh, you know, if you go to a chiropractor and they say, you know, for your first appointment, they say, oh, I'm going to need to see you for the next month, three or four times a week to adjust you. And then you'll be all good. Get out of that. Don't mm -hmm. do that. They're just. BSing you get out of that if they're just um, if they adjust you one time they say like oh maybe once a month or something like that then that's perfectly fine um, and it just all kind of depends on how they sell it to you as well um, so if you have a chiropractor that's saying like I'll give an example like uh, acupuncture with acupuncture some people say it works some people say it doesn't I'm one of those people that is skeptical about acupuncture because they say that they can prick you in the foot and you know make a headache go away mm -hmm. um, and they say it's all about the energy and all that stuff no scientific answers no definite answers on how that works that's more if, if they're BSing something and you, you're able to tell someone is BSing something get out of that but if they're saying like oh I'm just going to adjust you like this could work it couldn't work because that's pretty much what the medical field is is if your shoulder is hurting you try all these possible routes but chances are maybe it won't work maybe it will work you're gonna need surgery all that stuff so um, they're gonna tell you like oh I'm gonna adjust your back because your C1 and C2 vertebrae are out of alignment I'm gonna crack well that would be your neck because that's cervical anyways um, so they'll crack your neck and then if you feel better better after that then that's probably something that's working um, but that's something that I would say don't go to all the time um, don't use chiropractic like every day don't have someone and don't have like someone that's not a professional crack your back as well or even crack your neck because <laughs> that'll kill you um, but um, if, if something every once in a while that you want to do um, definitely I don't really see any problem with it cool so <clears throat> you want to work with athletes is like would you want be working with uh, individual athletes or like teams or what do you know so the way it works out is so athletic trainers are the ones that work with like the team overall because okay. they make their workout schedule and like the strength and conditioning and all of that um, so that'd be the athletic trainers and then with physical therapists they're the ones that work with um, the injuries um, so I shadowed a physical therapist that was working with athletes back home at the University of Dayton um, and I saw a bunch of um, ACL injuries, I saw some um, ankle injuries, I saw foot surgeries that they had to rehab from. Uh, there was one, it was really cool, it's, it's really bad because it was a horrible injury but it was something really cool for me to see and observe. Um, there was a volleyball player that had like just completely torn her hamstring. Um, and so they, she had surgery for it. And I think at this point she was maybe a week or two out from surgery and they were starting to just do a few exercises, nothing too crazy. Cause that's a really intensive, um, surgery. You don't want to go right back into everything hundred percent, but I was able to see like her, the back of her leg was all still like black and blue mm -hmm. on the back. Um, so that was a really cool thing to see in rehab. Um, 
But yeah, I've seen all of those different types of things. Mm. Caleb, your expert opinion here, do you think stride line socks could prevent injuries, future injuries within the within the like the uh, athletes? Um, to be honest, I, I don't yes. know too much about stride okay. line socks. Um, but I have seen things, lesser things that have prevented injury. Um, something as simple as, you know, uh, something on the sole of your foot that raises your arch to prevent a Liz Franck. Um, injury on your foot, which is like a more um, tendon bone around that. I, I'm using a lot of so. I think I can I can kind of dumb it down. So what you're saying is wearing sideline so sideline socks can help prevent injuries. Yes, I am saying. Wow, that, that is <laughs> that's revolutionary. That's that's you heard it here, folks, live on air with Caleb Colon Colon. You know how to say Colon. Cologne. Cologne. Yes, yeah. Listen to a third year college student. You say 30? <laughs> third year. Oh, shoot, yeah. Well, I just finished my third year, so I guess I'm a fourth year now. So. What, what was like, do you have like a backup, not like a backup plan, but like what was like another thing you were like looking into? Um, Big thing was athletic training. Um, okay. I knew I wanted to go in the med medical field, but uh, one thing that has always interested me, um, I absolutely love baseball. Um, watching it, I'm a huge Reds fan. I love to watch baseball, follow all the players and all that. Um, but I really love baseball stats. So you know, nowadays they're going more towards the saber metrics of baseball. So you're looking at like WAR, <coughs> which is a number that calculates the whole value of a player. Um, I've always been interested in that and wanted to um, go into that field. The thing for me is I absolutely hate math, and I so to do that something like that I would have to major in statistics right um so i ran cross country with a guy that graduated before i did and he majored in statistics statistics i can't say that word so statistics hard, um and he's just saying like oh i'm taking like calc 3 and i'm only going to use excel for the rest of my life so that was yeah. something that i didn't really not not to you know mm -hmm. get on statistics majors or anything like that sorry if i did that but wow um, <laughs> If you want to do statistics, that's fine. Like, you do what you want with your life, you guys. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm digging myself into a hole. Um, but, yeah, that was just something for me personally that I didn't really want to do. So I was more interested. Like, I loved anatomy class in high school. So that was more of a route that I uh, felt like I would enjoy a lot more. Do you play baseball in high school? Uh, not in high school. I played a lot um, pretty much my whole life up until high school. Okay. Have you, is there any way you can think of or have you done anything where you can kind of make yourself stick out from everyone else besides grades? Um, in terms of like maybe graduate school, like applying graduate school or? Yeah, and then just like after that, just getting into the field and all that. Okay, um, yeah, so some of the things that, that would probably make me stick out um, is a lot of my probably involvement on campus. Um, I am part of the Levis leadership. Um, program. I'm a facilitator for that. Uh, I just got into mortarboard. I became the president of that organization. Um, I'm a presidential ambassador. So that's one thing is like college is a lot of resume building. Um, so that's one thing that I've learned. And uh, as of right now, for early decision, they don't look at your resume at all. But once you're applying the normal way that everyone else would, uh, they do look at that. So um, that's one thing that I think I always, like, I, you've heard that 80% of what you learn in the classroom, or, well, 80% of what you learn in college is out of the classroom. Um, and I believe that all of that would be through um, organizations, whether that be fraternities, sororities, um, representing the school, um, tour guiding, jobs, whatever you have. I think a lot of the interpersonal skills, interviewing skills, all that stuff that you learn is going to be through the organizations that you're part of and networking skills. Um, and not just because you're not going to learn in a classroom how to interview. You learn that through going out there and talking to people. Mm -hmm. So uh, during your collegiate career, has there been any challenges that you faced that you've had to get through? Not anything huge. Like I, I've heard of people that have had huge um, challenges and obstacles throughout their college careers, you know, dealing with mental health or other things like that. So I haven't had to deal with anything too huge, thank God. Um, but I'm really happy about that. But I guess the one thing that I've had to deal with was probably last year. Um, I Sophomore year is probably one of my hardest years um, in terms of academics and having to deal with um, 
time managing my academics and also my organizations I'm involved in. Um, but with that, my second semester, spring semester, I struggled a ton in physiology. Um, and I just didn't understand the class. I tried so hard. I just didn't, I wasn't getting it. Um, and I didn't pass the class. And after that semester, I looked at that grade and I was just like, I, I didn't even know if I wanted to be a physical therapist anymore. So at that point in time in my life, I was actually considering changing my major to something else. I don't know what I would have changed it to, but um, eventually I decided that I was going to not give up on my dream of being a physical therapist and I was going to um, just keep on pursuing. So I decided to retake the class uh, in the summer and I got an A in it. So that kind of boosted my confidence there. But I guess that's the one challenge that I've had here um, that kind of almost deterred me from you know pursuing the major that I wanted to have. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know about you, but like with me, whenever I face challenges, whenever I overcome it, it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> you kind of get that same feeling where it's like, it, it sucks, but then once when you push through it, it's that much more rewarding because you kind of, you finally got it over with and done and done. You right. You kind of get that feeling. Yeah, I definitely, like when I got that last grade, I, when I got that A in physiology, it was kind of uh, that triumphant, you know, kick to the gut to that class because gotcha. um, I just felt really good getting that and I that's just that is definitely how you grow um, mm -hmm. a lot of people see obstacles and they're just beaten down by it um, some people give up but that is I always try I know it's really hard in the situation but I always try to view obstacles as an opportunity uh, to grow um, mm -hmm. and to better yourself um, because you know you can't make a diamond without pressure. That's a true. Right. That's a true point. <laughs> I like it. I like the symbolism. Um, that's damn, me and my brain farts. I'm having that's two in a row today. Let me ask this: How long did it take you from failing that class? Because you said you were like kind of like on the fence of like I don't know if I want to be a physical therapist to like finally get that clear mind and be like, all right, I can do this. Let's let's buckle down. Um. Cause I know some people it takes like a while, like it, it can really ruin it. Like it'll take them a really long time, like yeah. getting it back in a good mindset. Well, for me, I did not have that much time to get my mindset together mm -hmm. um, because What's, what semester was it? Was it a spring? It semester? was spring semester. Okay. Yeah. So the school year ended. I think there's what two weeks break. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a two week break, and in those two weeks, I had to decide um, whether or not I was going to stay in my major. I had to pick myself up of the pieces that I had in physiology and struggled a lot in that class. Um, and then I had to sign up for the class as well. So um, I did not have that much time at all in those two weeks to go ahead and get everything planned out. So I think I signed up for that class probably like a few days before that Monday started and I had to go in for that first day. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it sounds like those where like when you get through and you have to push through the really hard times that's it's like those are the best experiences because it's there's like that cliche saying where it's all about the journey uh, instead of the destination and that's it's definitely true mm -hmm. because the journey is the majority of the time then once you get there it's like wow and like the bigger the journey the bigger that final destination is going to be and mm -hmm. the more rewarding it's going to feel once you get there yeah uh, one thing that I always try to think about that helps me a lot um, is if I'm ever going through a rough patch in my life I always just think like somewhere down, I, I think positively and I always think somewhere down the road I'm going to look back at this moment and I'm mm -hmm. going to laugh at it. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to think like, oh, that was, you know, just a bump along the road and I had many other mountains to climb. Um, so that's always something that's helped me out is just having a positive outlook on it and thinking about the future and thinking like in the future, like I'm just going to look back at this and I'm going to like smile with pride. Mm -hmm. Just makes you really appreciate those accomplishments when you actually like have a rough road getting there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so. Wait, yeah. I think we have a caller. Do we? Um, no, that's just oh, okay. Shoot. Dang, Dang it, it! That's just my flashlight on my phone. Oh. I turn that on. Dude, turn that off. What are you okay. Doing? Dang it! <laughs> if you guys, we're live on air. If you guys want to go ahead and call in right now, yeah, yeah, it's one eight hundred Strideline Socks. Offer code MTD. That's right, that's right. We call that number. We can talk live with Caleb here. Mm -hmm. So, Caleb. Yes. Uh, do you want to stay in the area when, when you're all done with school, or do you want to go somewhere else? I honestly have no clue. 
Okay, are you open to going somewhere else? Oh, I definitely am. Okay. Um, yeah, first starting out in college, I was <clears> like, <throat> I do not want to stay anywhere near Ohio. I want to go as far away as possible, <laughs> wherever that takes me. Um, but as I've been here, I realized, like living in Toledo, um, you know, graduating high school, you're thinking like, I want to be independent. I want to not live at home. I don't want to see my family ever again. And then once you are actually moved out, then it's like, oh man, but my mom's cooking just <laughs> sounds really good right now. Um, so that, that's been a lot of it for me. And, um, also like not too bad of an idea to go back home for a little bit. Um, I've also just made a ton of friends here at Toledo. Absolutely love the area here. Um, so I'm not, you know, probably just, I, I would like to stay in Ohio. I think that's what I've gone, uh, lean more towards now, um, instead of like moving out further away. Um, I think I'm leaning more towards staying here in Ohio if I can, um, you know, wherever the job takes you, I guess is right. how that works out. But yeah, me personally, I'm like 50, 50 because, um, you know, like, like you said, all my friends are here, so it's really nice and comfortable to be with them. Mm -hmm. um, but then also traveling and doing something like change is always fun. The mm -hmm. only thing that sucks about change is whenever you have change, you also need to accept that in order for change to happen, you need loss somewhere. Like you need to lose something in order for something to change. Right. So you have to be able to accept that loss and embrace whatever it is that you're doing without that thing that you don't have anymore. So that's like one thing that's like, I'm very 50-50 where... I'm obsessed with California, but I also really like my friends. <laughs> but Yeah, and I mean, that's another thing where that is another opportunity for growth. That's also um, true. Because I don't think there's been any other time in my life where I've grown more than when I went to college. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, living at home, um, parents are paying for everything. They give you your meals. Um, you know, you're... You, you don't have a bed. I didn't have a bedtime, but there was like a bedtime. Like I'm using quotations right now. Even when we lived together, we had a bedtime. We did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You broke. It was it. like it was like two in the morning. Like we. Were, <laughs> oh, okay. We were uh, up watching man, comedies. We we nine. broke that a yeah. lot. Yeah, calves at nine. <laughs> we broke that <laughs> two in the morning bedtime a lot then. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no. I mean, and that's been the big big opportunity for growth so i think moving away away from home away from all your friends and family um that is another huge opportunity for growth um for example like my parents um they got married in their early 20s um, and they lived in puerto rico their whole lives and then they just decided to move to ohio um they had a college education that was good and that helped them out a lot but still they didn't have any friends or family around um they didn't have um a place to stay for a little bit they only like they didn't officially have like an apartment or a house that they bought. Um, so they stayed with a host family for, the, for their first few months here. Yeah. Um, but my parents always look back on that moment and say like, those were the times when like we grew the most. Yeah. And there's like, we have so many different opportunities with the country living and just like we could basically live wherever we want mm -hmm. and basically do, basically for the most part, do whatever we want. We just have to be able to uh, put our minds to it and we can do it basically. And it's just, so cool that we have these all these opportunities. Um, you know, I hear that a big place to go for opportunities right now is currently South Dakota. I hear there's like a really big booming industry out there. Yeah, have you have you heard anything about that? Kayla? I have not. What, so, what's the industry for? Pretty much anything you want. South Dakota is it's booming. It's uh, an expansive, sparsely populated mis Midwestern U.S. state. Um, you, I mean, you know, there's rolling prairies that give dramatic Black Hills Nashville something, and but it's just a great, it's a great place to go to, especially for your major. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you just read all that off your phone? No, no, I did not. I, I spit that out because uh, I'm very passionate. That's that's honestly where I would like to go. Would be South Dakota and, okay. and start a family. Um, <laughs> and I think you should do the same. Yeah. You think uh, you, you think yeah. I should move out there too? Yeah. I'm pretty sure they don't. They have like some sort of lacrosse team out there they have they have 14 different lacrosse teams across uh the entire state of south dakota um like professional or uh it's it's elementary school oh, teams okay. there's 14 elementaries they're great to go and watch though okay so it's it's a great thing like honestly that. That, that's probably one of the main attractions of south dakota is the competitive competitiveness of the uh, elementary lacrosse teams Huh. And they play a big game. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm sure there's a lot of injuries. I'm pr they're probably, yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> they're they're gonna kill me for saying this, but like right on the border, it's it's technically North Dakota, but it's basically South Dakota. They actually do have a minor league baseball team. 
So, <laughs> I'd rather watch Elementary Lacrosse, to be honest. It's a definitely a highlight. Yeah, yeah. seems like. It, it, All right, Caleb. I'm going to ask you a really tough question. You have to answer it here. And you're probably not going to know this, but what is the capital of South Dakota? The capital of South Dakota. Um, if you I need know any what hints, it is. If you need I, any hints, I can give you some hints. I know what it is. I'm not too sure on how to pronounce it. Um, it's like, is it Pierre or something like that? Yeah. That was a oh my good. gosh. Wow. That was really <laughs> quick. Yeah, hey. That was really quick. Good Lucky job. Guys. Wow. Yeah. Lucky no, no. Lucky I think a lot of people know that. That's a pretty yeah. poppin' pop mm-hmm. place. Poppin' place? I mean, yeah. I yeah. it. I mean, it's... Did I pronounce it right? Okay. Now, if you can get this question correct, Caleb. Okay. Um, I'm not going to give you anything, but let's just see if you can just maybe roundabout, maybe get it. The uh, population of Pierre, South Dakota. Um, you know what? Hold up, hold up. If you get this, I'll give you 50% off Stradline Socks. 50% off Stradline Socks. Mm-hmm. I have to get the exact number? Uh, yeah. You think yeah. you can hit it? God. Uh, you have to hit it exact. I'm not even going to give it to you if you get it within I'm, one. I'm just going to say some random... What's, what's the question again? The uh, population of Pierre, South Dakota. Okay. This is a tough one. Um, I'm honestly just... How about, it. how about you guys both say it at the same time? What you guys think? Mm, I don't know if I'll get it. I don't think I'm gonna get it. Oh, here I'll, I'm gonna guess it. Um, wait, do you do you want to do it at the same time, Daniel? You guys have to know this. No. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, so just we'll, we'll just yeah. um, no, I'm gonna. Any try. callers? If you guys want to call in real quick before yeah, can I have guess. Friend? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, oh, shoot, I don't have my phone on me. I got it. I got this. I got this. You got it. Okay. Population um, of Pierre, South Dakota. Come uh, on. So, according uh, to the 2010 census, what do you think it is? Thirteen thousand um, six forty six. Wait, six forty what? Six forty six. Oh my gosh! That get it? Yeah, you got it. Wow. <laughs> oh my god! I could have sworn there was like more than that. Like six forty seven. At, at least like a hundred thousand. <laughs> no, it's wow. thirteen thousand six hundred. Wow, wow. So good it's job. A, it's a very exclusive place to live then. Yeah, Woo! it's honestly, and that's. Man, that's where I'm looking to, to go. Yeah, is because yeah. uh, it was founded in 1880 on the east bank of the Missouri River. So I think that's pretty cool. Huh? No, I think I'm gonna buy a lottery ticket now. If yeah. you're lucky. You know, I yeah. was I was initially looking into California, but Sawyer's really persuaded me to think otherwise. You know, and that's another important thing that we have to do when going leaving college. We have to make sure we're having open minds, um, because you never know what's gonna happen. You know. Yeah. Definitely. And then just plan for eventually getting into North Dakota. Getting up there at some Getting point. Up there. Yeah. Yeah. Where's Pierre, South Dakota, in terms like is it on the? South it's about side? forty miles northeast of uh, the the Hamptons of South Dakota. You is it on like a, the north north side of South Dakota or like south? Side? It's uh, about Midwest, about two miles east. Okay, it's, I was gonna say because like, do, do you end up just like slowly migrating up to North Dakota? So you or? take. You it's t- like I got I got it. So you know, there's like there's east side, there's west side. Yeah, it's like. It's to the left of east side, it's to the right of west side. Yeah. It's kind of in that general area. I see. All right. Well, what's next? Yeah, man. Uh, so, <laughs> what's something that you regret maybe not doing in college or something you regret maybe you didn't take advantage of? Something that I did not do that I regret. Yeah, something you kind of wish you would have done. Um, one thing for me, uh, was, um, I really enjoyed my experience at college. I don't think I would change anything at all. Uh, one thing for me though, is I kind of, what, I kind of, uh, I, I, I regret not joining a fraternity, to be honest. Um, that's been one thing that, uh, I've always seen Greek life and I've respected Greek life. Um, and I always talk about them on my tours with a bunch of uh, respect and everything like that. Um, but that's one thing that I, I probably really regret is that I didn't do that. Not much of a big, big regret though. I mean, I still, like I said, I still love my experience in college and I wouldn't change anything. But that would be like the one tiny thing there that I wish I would have done. Kind of laughed a little at first. Is that funny? Yeah, there was someone uh, tickling my feet. Caleb. Listen, all right, we're gonna we're gonna cut this out real quick. Caleb, <laughs> I need you. I need you to take this serious. Okay, this is a serious podcast. You're on here. You're joking. You're laughing. 
This is that's not what this is about. Okay, can you do that for me? Yeah, I got you. Now say you're sorry. I, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs>